But intrepid German paleontologists working in Egypt unearthed fragments of a giant meat eater with massive shark like teeth. They named it Cacarodontosaurus saharicus, shark tooth reptile of the Sahara. But its remains were destroyed in the Second World War. After the war, French explorer René Lavocar spent months wandering alone in the inhospitable wastes of the Moroccan Sahara. He too found shark-like teeth. In 1995, Chicago paleontologist Paul Serino led another expedition into the heart of the Moroccan Sahara. He had little to go on other than Lavocar's now cold trail and that the fragments had been found in rocks about a hundred million years old. After two torturous months of searing heat, searching rock surfaces that tore their boots to shreds, their efforts seemed fruitless. Yep. Then, with only two days of the expedition left, Sereno hit pay dirt. It was totally unpredictable. I saw an area of outcrop. I walked towards it. And I walked over and I saw in front of me a pile of bones, fragments. I picked this thing up, looked at the upside down side, and my eyes popped out of my head. Here we had the back end of a theropod skull, beautifully preserved. He went back to see if the bones might have fallen from higher on the sheer cliff. I circled around again, and that's when I saw, I looked up, and I saw on a pillar of rock the rest of the the brain case and the skull going into the side of this cliff. And it was a sheer cliff and it was sort of like a little statue sitting up there. And my, again, this was too much. I mean, <laughs> sure holds the lip. look at this. Have you guys seen the teeth? This is incredible. One, two, three. There's a replacing tooth here. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We got the whole jaw. Find the count of three. One, two, three. three. Okay. Oh. Sereno had found a skull five and a half feet long. One, two, three. With six inch shark like teeth. Back home in Chicago, Sereno slowly pieced together a skull even larger than the champ's T Rex. Sereno introduced a stockier, slower, heavier animal. A bruiser with a wrestler-like neck and a narrow skull. A brain half the volume of T-Rexes and quite different teeth. While T-Rex chomped with round puncturing teeth, its African rival used its sharp slicing teeth to bite, rip and tear. Africa's shark tooth killer was about to be outclassed by an even stronger shark tooth challenger from South America. T-Rex was about to meet its match in Argentina. The ultimate challenger to T-Rex was trained in the vastness of Patagonia and was named Giganotosaurus, the giant reptile of the south. It comes from the same stable of fighters as its sparring partner, the shark tooth killer from Africa. 150 million years ago, South America and Africa were still joined, and the ancestors of the two heavyweights were free to roam across the continents. Scientists had believed that South America split off from Africa about 130 million years ago. But these two shark tooth challengers, both 95 million years old, were so closely related that scientists now believe that Africa and South America could only have split apart at about that time. At the Carmen Funes Museum in Patagonia, Rodolfo Coria is no stranger to the world of giants. He led the team that excavated Giganotosaurus. Today, they are setting out early and with some excitement, they have found another giant. Argentina is fast becoming the Texas of the paleo world. Everything seems bigger there. When 
Sequoia and his team first unearthed Gigantosaurus, the fossil bones were huge. When they reached the end of its shin bone, they realized that it was not only the biggest meat eater known in South America, it was the biggest carnivore in the world. It was really exciting because, you know, it doesn't, doesn't happen every time to find the records in dinosaurs. But the specimen Coria is excavating today is even bigger, establishing that their first find was not a freak. Like its African cousin, Gigantosaurus's teeth are distinctly different from the bone-crunching, rounder teeth of T. rex. The teeth are very sharp in the edges, but at the same time are very narrow. They look, really, they look like uh, shark teeth. Gigantosaurus's eyesight was not as sharp as T. rex. Its eyes were in the side of its head. As a hunter, it would be poor at judging distance, having to bob and weave its head up and down and side to side to pick out its prey against a background. Gigantosaurus hunted very large prey, plant-eating giants many times its own size. In the red corner, representing North America, champion killer of the prehistoric world, the Tyrant Lizard King. In the blue corner, the challenger from South America, Gigantosaurus, the giant reptile of the South. A pre-fight assessment from the experts. The smart money is definitely on the reigning champion. He's got a brain size twice the size of his opponents. He's able to think faster on his feet, check out his opponent's moves. Paleontologist Ted Daeschler has been following Gigantosaurus, the giant. The truth is, the giant's a bit of an unknown quantity. Only one skeleton has ever been found, and no one's had a good look at him in a fight. But judging by the looks of him, I'd say he's a bruiser, a slugger. T-Rex and Gigantosaurus evolved on different continents at different times and hunted different prey. Gigantosaurus took on animals several times his size, while T-Rex preyed on animals smaller than he was. T-Rex likes to go in for a quick kill, rather like a lion does today. A slashing of jaws, a ripping of flesh, a crunching of bone. The word is that the giant attacks his prey quickly and violently and backs off to survey the damage. He may follow his prey like the Komodo dragon today, waiting for the animal to weaken and attacking again. And like the Komodo dragon, the giant's mouth was a toxic breeding ground for virulent bacteria. Judging by the bad breath, infection could be a problem after the bite. Gigantosaurus would then return and finish off its weakened prey. T-Rex's arms may look puny, but they're not. They're heavily muscled. I've seen him lift 450 pounds, one arm, training. That's an Olympic record. He may be a ton or two lighter, but he's a super heavyweight. He's fast, he's agile, he's much more mobile than his competitor. He's got all the moves. The giant's a bit longer than the Tyrant King, so he's got a better reach. He's also a bit heavier, so he may not be as fast or as maneuverable. But if he can sink those teeth into the champ, he'll rip him apart. The challenger is bobbing and weaving. Is this to taunt the champ? To get perspective, he has to bob up and down or move his head side to side. T-Rex has a great advantage. His eyes face forward. He has three-dimensional vision. He can judge depth. He can make his moves perfectly. That is, as long as T-Rex has got two eyes. If the giant can cut one of them early on, that advantage will count for nothing. He's obviously not as bright as the champ. He's got a smaller brain. But that might be to his advantage. He'll be less sensitive to the pain. And his size will help him soak up the punishment anyway. Look at those teeth. This is one of the most devastating sights in the history of life on Earth. These teeth are long, they're heavy, they're designed to pass through right through flesh or bone. They give Rex the ability to bite any part of an opponent's body. The giant has more specialized teeth. Leaf of sharp cutters, steak knives. He'd avoid the bone and go directly for the flesh. 
And if the champ lets his guard down, one bite could do a lot of damage. The Clash of the Titans. Two killer dinosaurs. They lived millions of years apart on two different continents. The two greatest predators of all time. Who won the rumble in the jungle? With its superior brain, eyesight and agility, T-Rex would have made mincemeat out of his South American challenger. Today, T-Rex remains the undefeated heavyweight champ, king of the tyrant lizards.